Today we're going to be taking a look at a utility you can run in Docker that can basically monitor your internet speed, your external bandwidth speed, and give you some information about that. Now this can be ran in Docker, which is how we're running it today. And what I'd like to do is I like to run this on a system that's plugged directly into my router, whether that be a NAS, like a Synology NAS, which is actually what we're going to be using today, or any other type of system that is plugged into your network and interacting with the outside world. And uh, essentially what we're using this for is I run tons of Docker containers at home for various crypto nodes. And some of these are bandwidth intensive. So we've got things like we're running lots of storage nodes, running file station, running several of them actually on the system that we're going to be using today, uh, as well as Honeygain and Mysterium. Now both Honeygain and Mysterium, I'm considering shutting those down because the rewards just aren't really there and I can use that bandwidth for other applications. But what this is going to allow us to do by installing this utility and kind of letting it run in the background, do its own thing, it's going to show us if we have issues getting to the outside world at maximum uh, connection speed. So if we see dips, we can see that there's a lot of external traffic happening at that time. And we can kind of get a glimpse into that information. It's obviously not going to remediate anything for us, but it'll allow us to at least see kind of what is happening at what times of the day. The first thing we need is we need a uh, Docker host. So I'm going to be running this on my Synology NAS, as I mentioned. And it's very simple to get up and running. So I'm already SSH'd in, and we're going to run a Docker run. We're going to run it detached. We're going to do a port mapping. Now 5216 is the port, and we're going to do a volume mapping. We're going to let this create a volume called MySpeed. It's going to map it to MySpeed slash data. Uh, and we're going to tell it to always restart unless we stop it. We're going to name it MySpeed, and this is the image name. So it's German Newsmaker slash MySpeed. We're going to go ahead and hit enter. We're going to let this go out, download the image, set up that volume, and get the container up and running. Once the container is up and running, we should be able to go to port 5216 on this IP address and access the dashboard. So we're gonna go to the IP colon 5216, and we're gonna be presented with this EULA. Now, this utility uses UCLA, which is speedtest.net, and so we need to accept the end user license agreement. We're gonna go ahead and hit accept. You only have to do that one time. And now you can see there are currently no tests available. We can run a quick test if we want. So we're going to go ahead and do that real quick. You just hit this button up here. And this will run a quick test of your internet speed. So if you just want to use this utility periodically, check your speed. You can do that by just coming in here and hitting that button. We're going to let this run. And we should be getting around 300 meg up and 300 meg down. And here we can see the speeds uh, are actually not what we expected. So we've got 332 up, but right now we only have 221 down. Now, currently in the house, I do have uh, a TV streaming the football game. So it could be part of the reason why our download's a little bit restricted here. Um, that is currently streaming in 1080p over the internet. So that is quite possible. But what we want to do now is come over to settings and what I like to do is set the frequency. Now, what you can essentially do with this is you can have this on a schedule where it's periodically doing that speed check for you and kind of building out a report of what that information looks like. So to do that, I'm going to come here, go to set frequency. And here's the settings that we can do. So we can do every minute, we can do every 30 minutes, every hour. The default is every hour which I think is a good time span to use. However, for the purposes of this video, I'm actually gonna do a custom. So to do that, I can do set manually. 
And in here, I can put a cron expression. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this, I'm going to do 0 slash 5. What this is going to do is this is going to tell it to run every 5 minutes at the 5 minute mark of the hour. So this is going to run at 2.15, then at 2.15, or 2.10, then 2.15, then 2.20, and so on. And so we're going to do that update. And at this point, it's set on a schedule. And what will happen is after 10 runs, uh, we can actually come in and there's a recommendation section here. You can see you have to have at least 10 runs to do that. Uh, I'm not really going to use the recommendations part. However, what we will be doing is we will be taking a look at if we head on over to switch view. So right now we are on this statistics view. Switch over to the overview. This will list all of the tests that happen. So that last test that happened, obviously I happened at 205. Our ping time was eight milliseconds and our download was 221. We were expecting closer to 300. We'll see how the next run goes. And our upload was 332, which is above well, kind of what we expect. I think the target is actually, it's either 300 or 330, I forget, somewhere in that range. Uh, I do have AT&T here, so it's a, the connection I have is a little bit different than most residential places would have. And then uh, if you go to integrations, you can set up Discord alerts. I can do health checks, you can do Telegram, or if you want a webhook to any generic site, you can do that as well. But at this point, we're pretty much set up. We've got that frequency set up. Uh, you can also set up periods, which I typically don't do. Um, but this will show basically the test results for the last 24 hours, two days, seven days, or 30 days. I just leave the default of 24 hours. And we're just going to let this run for about an hour. We're going to get some test results back. And I'll see you guys back when that is done. And we'll kind of take a look at what the statistics look like. And we can see if we have any ebbs and flows in between each of those five minute marks. It's been a little bit over an hour and we can see that it did run 14 tests with that first one being the one that we ran uh, manually. And the average duration was 18 seconds per test. And what we're seeing here, however, though, so our upload is consistent at around 330, but we are seeing some ebbs and flows with the download speed. Uh, with the minimum download speed being 171 megabits per second and the max being 266. So we did see some uh, fluctuations there. And we're able to also see that one of those tests had a ping of nine milliseconds versus eight milliseconds. The chart may look bad but one millisecond not horrible on that difference there and if we hop on over and do switch view again and go to the overview we can see a breakdown of each test so here we can see that one that took nine milliseconds to complete but if we look at the actual upload speeds we can see uploads everything was right around that 330 mark and on the download side uh, we can see that we hit a low of 171 on one test here, uh, but it kind of has rebounded. So we got 219, 242. Right now, uh, latest test, we're sitting at 266 megabits per second. So what this is telling us is we do have processes on the network. Actually, one just ran just now. And you can see this does auto refresh. So you are able to see it in real time just pop up. And what we're noticing is we've got tons of storage providers. Like I mentioned, we got FileStation running, we got Honeygain, we got all these other processes running on the network. And we are seeing us losing, um, basically going from 330 down to about 250, 260 within that range uh, because of all the processes that are running. Uh, a lot of those are most likely storage based where end users are downloading their files and so it's basically reaching out to us and they're either uploading or downloading there might be some some things going back and forth there um, here we can see that uh, on the latest test our upload did dip down to 326 um, from 330 
average. And so not a big difference, but it is a little bit of a dip there, which most likely is an indication that there is some activity going on on our storage providers. So something that we can take a look at, but more importantly, this helps us in identifying if we can scale out or not. So whenever I want to see if it's feasible for me to run more nodes within my network, no matter what those nodes are, I can come here, I can take a look and see kind of what that utilization is looking like. And if, you know, if we're pegging, let's say half of our bandwidth, I'm probably going to stop at that point and not scale out any more nodes because I still want that bandwidth for my TV streaming services, um, just things that web browsing, uploading to YouTube, just various things that I do personally. Um, and plus I work from home. So that's another big factor to me too. I need to keep an eye on the bandwidth to make sure it's not consuming too much uh, where it makes me essentially inefficient at my job during the day. So this is a great way to see that. And if we want to hop back on over to the stats portion, we can just do real quick, easy switch view, go back to statistics, hit update. We are good. Now, I don't want this running every five minutes. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back to set frequency. And I am going to set this to be every hour. This will run a bandwidth test every hour, and I'll be able to kind of monitor it. Um, periodically and see what's going on.